What's up, VC? It's Steve again, Harmless Rebel. Time for another punk update. Uh, first off, in the background, we're playing uh, Rise Against first album, uh, Revolutions Per Minute. Killer album, killer band. Um, this is the uh, 10th anniversary re-release. Um, I got the version from Hot Topic on white vinyl. I think it was limited to 500. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, killer album. Uh, I mean, Rise Against, like I said, it, it's probably my favorite of the modern punk bands. Um, all of their albums are amazing. They, depending on when you're watching this, they either have an album coming out or they just had an album come out. So um, they're still putting out just killer music. Um, definitely worth having in the collection. This isn't new for me. I, I actually bought this six or seven months ago when it came out. Um, just felt like playing it in the background. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into the new stuff. These, these first couple albums I got from a Hole in the Wall record store that I talked about um, maybe one or two videos ago. Um, a couple of kids got together, and I say kids, they, they, they've got to be late teens, early 20s, and decided to start a record store. Um, when I pulled up, I had to double check to make sure I was in the right place. Uh, there's no signage. Uh, I mean, there's literally a little uh, piece of poster board in the window with their logo haphazardly drawn or half-assed drawn on it. Um, I got in and uh, there's maybe three or four hundred albums I wasn't expecting too much. Uh, but I did notice one, uh, one of the crates was labeled punk and metal, so I went straight there. Uh, I ended up finding a couple of Sabbath albums, which I showed in my last video, which I was pretty happy about because I was looking for those. Um, I was about to pay for those and leave, and then I noticed the Just In uh, crate that they had right by the door, so I decided to check that. And one of the first things I noticed in there was an album that I have talked about before, and that's Transgender Dysphoria Blues from Against Me. Um, Against Me is probably my second favorite of the modern uh, punk bands. I love this band. Everything that they've put out has been amazing from beginning to end. Um, their last album was uh, very critically acclaimed. It was uh, White Crosses. Amazing, amazing album. Um, I was a little bit worried about this one when they uh, first announced it. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with, with Against Me, the lead singer does have transgender dysphoria um, and, and is in the process of becoming a woman. And uh, I was kind of worried about what the implications of that would be on the band. And I read some interviews with her where she had talked about um, leaving Against Me as more the traditional punk band and then starting a new band where she would touch on some of the transgender um, issues that she's faced. Uh, and she decided not to do that. She decided to stick with Against Me because it was a bigger name. Um, and I was kind of worried about that. I was afraid she was going to alienate... Um, um, her fans like me and, and go more towards the uh, trying to pick up transgender fans or um, the gay lesbian community fans um, and, and that wasn't the case uh, she was able to do a good job of writing these songs so that not only do they appeal to the, the transgender and the gay lesbian community but they still um, hit that right hit the right nerve with her uh, or with the band's uh, old school fans that have been with them since uh, you know, 97, 98 when she first came out. Um, this album's amazing. Um, the band does a great job. Um, I love this album from beginning to end. Uh, I'm really impressed with, with with how they were able to pull off uh, the mix. Uh, so, um, Fuck My Life 666, amazing song. Uh, I mean, honestly, the, the whole album is, is really cool. Uh, I definitely recommend you pick this up. I would probably list this as my third favorite album of the year so far. Um, that's how good it is, in my opinion. So um, definitely check it out if you can. Uh, Transgender Dysphoria Blues. Uh, same record store. Actually, a couple uh, records behind this in that crate was a sealed copy of this. And I was pretty blown away to see it. Uh, Who's Purdue? Flip your wig or Husker do, however you say it. I say Husker do. Um, this was their 85 release. Uh, this was a sealed copy, and um, it wasn't in the best shape. The, the corners, I, I shouldn't say it wasn't in the best shape. It's in killer shape. But uh, the corner's kind of damaged right there. But other than that, it's pretty much perfect. Um, 
They had it marked for a really good price. I think it was 13 or 14 bucks for a sealed copy. Um, this is not an original, uh, but it's also not the most recent repress. I believe this one was from 91 or 92, um, still sealed. Um, so I was really stoked to run across this. Um, I did not have a copy of Flip Your Wig, so it was definitely a cool pickup. And it was just one of those unexpected finds, you know. I don't, I don't expect, uh, and these were some punk kids. Um, I believe one of them actually plays in a punk band that, that plays locally. Um, I'm always amazed with what younger kids are listening to, though. And, and when I brought this up, the kid was like, oh, that's my favorite punk band, you know, which kind of blew me away. I wouldn't list it as my favorite punk band. I probably wouldn't even put it in my top 15, but Husker Du is a great, great band. Um, so definitely worth checking out. Now, this next four, um, I've talked about CD Warehouse before, um, which is where I got the rest of the albums I'm about to show. CD Warehouse is a, it's just that, it's a CD store, a new and new CD store. Um, they've also got uh, vinyl, Blu-ray, I'm sorry, uh, Blu-ray, DVDs, um, and a couple of them, it's a chain, there, there's probably 10 of them uh, in Georgia, uh, and then maybe elsewhere, I don't know, Georgia's the only place I've seen them. But uh, a couple of them also carry vinyl. Um, I frequent one. Uh, I go there about once a week. And, and I always find amazing albums and amazing deals there. Um, I don't know where they get their prices from. Um, I don't know if they price them based on what they pay for them. But I've gotten some killer deals there. Um, I've run across stuff that would cost me 40 50 bucks in record stores. You know, for 10 15 bucks. So um, it's definitely... Uh, one of my honey holes, I guess. I would say I probably bought 200 albums um, from this particular CD warehouse. It's amazing the stuff gets. Um, so I've got another piece of this collection. There's a guy that, that uh, an old school punk collector that's slowly been getting rid of his collection at this CD warehouse. I'm not sure why he's doing it the way he is because I know they only pay like three or four bucks per album. Um, so I'm not sure. And this is a collector. I mean. These are, in the, these are the sleeves that the albums come in. They're all in perfect condition. This album's from 1985, and it's, it's flawless, you know. And and I've also, I, I showed a, pic, uh, a copy of uh, Black Market Clash last week or the week before. It's a uh, promo copy from 78, I think is when that album came out, in perfect condition. I mean, every album I get from this guy's collection has been immaculate. So I'm not sure why he's selling them for three or four bucks a CD warehouse instead of putting them on eBay or on Discogs where he could actually get the money for them, you know. But uh, first up, Clash, Cut the Crap. Um, this is my, as with most of you, I'm sure, my least favorite Clash album. It's not that it's a bad album in theory. Lyrically, it's a good album. Um, the songs, the structure is good. It's just produced really weird. Um, there's a lot of added... Uh, added instrumentation that doesn't need to be there. Um, I'm not sure what the band was was thinking when they did this one, but um, you know, I think this was kind of the album that killed The Clash, but uh, it, it's a stamp promo copy from, it's an original pressing from 85 in perfect condition, uh, you know, and I was I was pretty blown away to see it. It was a, it was a hole that I was missing. Um, Next up, this these these next three were the ones that really blew me away. And, and actually, like I said, I've, I've come across more of this collection. I've picked up a couple of the classes. I've picked up most of the collection as it's been sold off to the CD uh, warehouse. I did miss a couple. Apparently, they got a, a, a promo copy of London Calling In that I would have killed to get a hold of. Um, and they also got a copy of Sandinista End, which was an original copy. And if you're familiar with The Clash, Sandinista, an original pressing, goes for ridiculous money. So, um, I, I'm, it sucks that I missed those. I missed them by a day. I came in the day after they put that particular chunk out. But uh, I came back a week later and these were here. Um, one of those being the UK pressing of London Calling and Armageddon Time from The Clash. This is um, the 12-inch single. This, this version was only released on 12-inch in the UK. Uh, it was released on 7-inch here in the U.S. So, And it also has uh, Justice Tonight and Kick It Over, along with London Call and Armageddon Time. Again, mint condition. This is from 78 or 79. I mean, this guy, it, it kills me that he's uh, Don't get me wrong, I love it, because I'm, I'm reaping the benefits of it. But um, And these next two were just kind of the, 
uh, the end all be all of, of what I picked up. Um, the Clash, give them enough rope. Um, you can tell by the font that it's the first pressing. If you got this album, it's more than likely got the Clash written in Oriental uh, caricature or characters. Um, and it just looks kind of silly. I, I do prefer the block letter Clash. Um, but this thing is in mint condition. I mean, you can look at it and see. I mean, it just blows blows me away that this guy would get rid of this, you know? And the vinyl is like it's never been played. I mean, there's not one sound, one pop, you know? Um, just immaculate, immaculate condition. Um, so give them enough rope. And the last one, it's, it's kind of funny when I picked it up. Number one, I'm not a huge fan of the band. They do have songs I like. I know that they're um, considered here in the U.S. one of the most important punk bands. Um, like I said, I, I'm not a huge fan of theirs. Um, I don't buy into all the hype behind them. But uh, they, they were a good band and an important band. And it's funny that I, I bought this. And as I was listening to it for the first time, um, I heard that the final member uh, passed away. So um, Ramones, Mondo Bizarro. Um, I was really uh, surprised when I saw this. Um, you know, you just don't see a lot of the late 90s. Uh, I'm sorry, late 80s, early 90s, Ramones pop up at all. Um, you know, you run across the first couple albums here and there, but, um, uh, and to make things even better, this isn't just a regular, the regular copy of Mondo Bizarro, which, are, are, which is already rare to start with. This is actually the promo copy. It's kind of hard to see right there. Um, there is no white label promo that I know of of this. Uh, from what I can tell, it's they're all stamp promos. And there's only a handful, and they go for anywhere from sixty to one hundred and twenty-five dollars um, on eBay, according to Pop Site. This thing's in perfect condition, uh, with the exception of I don't know if you can see that right there, a little damage to the top right there. I mean, other than that, great, great condition, and definitely uh, a nice addition to the collection. So um, that's it. You know, I just wanted to do a a, a quick punk update. Um, uh, have a good weekend, and uh, I look forward to uh, hearing your comments, and uh, I'll see you later. Take care.